Next, we have an interview with uh, world-renowned trends forecaster Gerald Salente, and uh, he's going to discuss the Chinese, Hong Kong, world economies, plus all the stuff that's happening geopolitically in the APAC region, plus some, uh, the U.S. elections. You don't want to miss this because this he's, he's been on CNN, CBS, NBC, all the major networks. This guy knows what he's talking about. It's something different for our show, and I hope we can bring more kind, these, these kinds of guests uh on our show. So please stick around. And after the interview, we will, of course, have our Shame on You Award. And welcome back to the interview portion of I on Hong Kong podcast. On the line, we have Trends Journal publisher, uh, Gerald Salente. Now, Trends Journal, what do they do? They forecast upcoming trends in the global economy, the state of uh, the world when it comes to conflict and other issues that affect us. Uh, even though it might be thousands of miles away, but being Hong Kong, even the littlest thing can affect us because of our unique way that our economy is structured. So without uh, further ado, I welcome Gerald Salin to the program. Gerald, very nice to have you here. Well, thanks so much for having me. So I just want to get off uh, you know, to the races with, with this question. Your thoughts on the umbrella movement that has been initiated in Hong Kong uh, just in uh, the end of September. Is that the Occupy Central? Yes. Yeah, it's the, now called the Umbrella Movement. I mean... Now called the Umbrella <laughs> Movement. Yes. Here's... You know, I'm here in the States, so I'm really only getting the news from the major wire services, wherever they may be. Very interesting. <clears throat> For example, when you go to China Daily or um, uh, Global Times, very little coverage. And in the States, we get scanned coverage as well. So it's very foggy here to, to the people. And as I watch it, it seems like a standstill with nothing going on. Um, where the, where the, I'm just, again, telling you from the perception that I'm getting, not, not from the knowledge that I have. Mm-hmm. And, and that it's, it's not going anywhere. And what they're doing, as I see it, is they're just wearing out the crowds without getting much of um, a solution. And as we see it, again, the information that's reported here, what it is, is that uh, will there be um, <clears throat> any type of democratic elections, I believe, what is it, 2017? Correct. And that seems to be the major issue. So it's not getting a lot of play in the States when it does make the... The newspapers, for example, and I'm still a, a reader of hard copy newspapers mm-hmm. for a variety of reasons. Um, it usually makes maybe like in the New York Times, page A17. <laughs> so not exactly <clears throat> uh, front page stuff. Not at all. Most Americans don't even know what's going on. Mm. Uh, but one thing <coughs> I've noticed that uh, you've been uh, forecasting as a trend is that Protests is not just happening in Hong Kong, but it's actually becoming a worldwide phenomenon. Yeah, it is because uh, systems are breaking down and people are starting to realize the power that they have. However, one of the you know, I've been at this a lot of years. I began my career. I used to run political campaigns mm-hmm. in Westchester County, which is the richest county in the United States. And I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate. I uh, taught American politics and campaign technology at St. John's University. Mm -hmm. And for many years, six years, I was a government affairs specialist for the chemical industry. Mm -hmm. I used to live between Chicago and D.C. So I know what it looks like, and I know how these things become effective. And I can tell you from my experience that one of the reasons these protest movements only go so far is that they don't have a, f- a battle plan for victory. And, and they go around <clears throat> trying in many ways to work within the system when the fact is there are no rules. If you play by their rules, you lose because they control the game. You know, it's like going to uh, Las Vegas and, and the game is, you know, it's a fixed game. Right. You know, they know how many people are going to win and how many are going to lose. So you got to bring in your own deck of cards. Hmm. So for these things to work, you, they really have to have an, uh, a strategy that everyone's on board for with a goal and an objective. 
And I remember what happened with the Occupy Peace Movement in the States. Uh, excuse me, Occupy, the Occupy Wall Street movements. Right. And they didn't have a plan. And they were criticized for it. And nothing happened. So, yes, we're seeing the populist movements moving around the world because people are getting shafted. It's very, it's obvious to everyone. I mean, in Hong Kong, for example, you know, from the data I read, you know, very few own most of everything. And, and to different varieties, it's the same thing around the world. There's a small club that controls the whole game and everybody's working for the man. And enough people have the dignity, courage, respect and integrity to say, I've had enough. You know, you're not my, you're not my slave owner. And I, and we're going to do something. So these populist movements are the future. And let's not forget, you know, there was, I'm here in America, there was the American Revolution, the French Revolution. You know, what had happened? It happened from a few people with enough courage to say, we've had enough. Right. So yes, we're going to see these movements continuing to spread. Your analysis is actually spot on because the, uh, the umbrella movement doesn't really have a plan. They come out with, uh, ideas over and over again, but some of them are not executed or they cancel them last minute. There really doesn't seem to be uh, any direction that it's going in at the moment. But also we see that from the other side, the government, before you would think that they would try to solve this politically, maybe uh, sit down and have serious discussions, but they <coughs> are now taking a w wait them out approach. And... Um, I don't know if that's that's a good strategy either, but I think a lot of people here also have memories of Tiananmen Square, and they don't want uh, a repeat of that. And China, I don't think, wants that image anymore, that when there's dissent, they crush it with tanks. Well, just for the record, what's going on in Hong Kong could never happen in the States. Why is that? <laughs> You gave it a clear new guy. Those people had a long time ago. I mean, this, this country has become so fascist, it's, it's disgusting. You saw what happened in Ferguson, Missouri. Yes. Yeah, that's only part of it. You know, they'll beat the hell out of you in no time. Yep. And uh, that, that's what you, you there, there's no rights left in this country. There's, there's so few of them. That have, the great ones have been taken away. They even have a thing called protest zones free speech zones. You, yeah. they'll, they'll lock you off into a certain corner free speech zones the whole country used to be a free speech zone and now the supreme court ruled that there's people if they don't want them in the free speech zones they're not allowed to go in there well you what they're doing in hong kong could never happen here if that happened in new york city this thing would have been over a long time ago I mean, they let Occupy Wall Street go on because it was in a park. And then when they, when they had enough of it, they cleaned out the park. Right. We got three uh, major uh, you know, throughways that are being uh, occupied uh, right now. And uh, it's not like the you – because know, what I saw in Ferguson was militarized police, not even it, regular – It's militarized everywhere. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You look at the last Trends Journal, the one before this one, mm -hmm. before Ferguson, we did a story, Cops Gone Wild. They've given them all this military equipment from Iraq and Afghanistan. They, got, they have Humvees. They have, you know, all these SWAT teams. No, it, it would never happen here. I'm telling you. Uh, like what's going on with the umbrella movement would not happen in the States. It would have been over a long time ago. Uh, I have to agree with you. Knowing, uh, you know, following the U.S. Uh, for for quite a while now, it it has seemed to have degenerated. But let's move on to uh, the next topic: uh, the state of the Chinese economy. Now, you talk to mainstream economists, and all day long they will say China's the model, China's the future, China's the way to go. But in your latest Trends Journal, you're saying that the Chinese economy is actually trend, trending towards a recession. Now, why, why do you uh, believe that that's uh, occurring in China? Well, because a lot of what – here, it's a very simple formula. Mm -hmm. If the United States and Europe don't buy, China is not manufacturing. Right. And if China is not manufacturing, Australia, Brazil, Chile, Bolivia, they're not exporting their natural resources. 
So you have a slowdown in purchasing. About 20 to 25 percent of China's GDP is built on real estate. Right. You look at China's real estate in 2013. Oh, it was up. Numbers were up around 27 percent. According to official figures already, it's down over 10 percent. Right. We see the photos of empty cities. Reports coming out. And again, I, these are only numbers that I know that are reported, so I can't verify their their factuality, mm-hmm. but they seem to be generally accepted as truth. You're looking at, what, 70 million luxury apartments that are vacant? So, you know, to me, China, I, oh, uh, they, the uh, Chinese Central Bank just announced, uh, I think, yesterday that they dumped in uh, several hundred thousand yuan into the system More stimulus. to pump it up. So it, it's, a, it's a Ponzi scheme, hmm. just like in the States. They have a different name for it. I don't know how you say quantitative easing in Chinese, <laughs> but I know they call it Abenomics in Japan, and they call it, uh, I'll do anything you want over there in uh, Europe in the ECB by Mario Draghi. Mm-hmm. And that's all it's going. So China, no, the China's economy, is, it's on the downward slope. You look at their... Uh, the GDP numbers, they're what, 1990 levels? It's quite low, yeah. Yeah. So, no, it's not going to turn around. You know, by the way, China's greatest problems, not Japan or America, you know, with, with geopolitics, China's greatest problems is people. And when they got 1.2 billion of them there, and with a lot of them out of work, you're going to see a populist movement. I mean, you know, and, and I, I was reading, and again, the facts only come out, you know, sporadically. I remember one year there were something like 50,000 uprisings in China. And, uh, you know, they don't get reported very often. No, China China is facing a lot of problems. And the biggest one is going to be internally if the, if manufacturing slows down. There's, there's massive overcapacity in China. And, and that's that's what I've been saying uh, on, on our show for uh, the last couple of months is that Xi Jinping, the president, is actually consolidating power through this so-called anti-bribery, anti-corruption drive, pl- getting uh, pledges of allegiance from the PLA, uh, using the terrorist threat to put more police uh, uh, in, in every corner of the street, especially in Beijing. And I said it's not for security. They know th- Things are coming down, and it's coming down hard. So they're preparing now so they can control the situation. Exactly. And, and they're, they're doing it in a lot of the countries. Yeah, and they're saber-rattling with Japan as a distraction and Philippines. Do, do you agree with that? Uh, to some extent with Japan. Yeah, with Japan, what's going on now, actually, this is a, this is a very uh, – it mirrors World War II. Mm-hmm. Americans, you know, all they know is that the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. They don't look at what happened before that. The Japanese were undercutting the market. Mm-hmm. And they, the Americans started cutting them off from uh, natural resources. They couldn't get rubber. They couldn't get oil. And Japan said, we're going to get our own. Well, Japan's doing the same thing now with Abenomics. Look at the, look at the yuan. Uh, was it, it's fallen from 50%. Uh, it's gained. The, the, the yen has fallen from 50% from the yuan. Right. And from the and the and about forty percent from the yuan, the, uh, the Korean currency. Right. So what does that do? It it improves their export market. That's what this is about. So it's you know, currency war. Up about this. It's 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 a currency war for, and that brings on the trade war. Right. So here's the scenario: you have a crash, you have a recession, depression, you have currency wars, trade wars, and world wars. They use the war element as the last card in the game to cover up the economic failure. It's, it's how many times do people have to see the same story replayed? Just different, it's different actors with different names. Uh, I, I have to totally agree with your analysis there. Um, we'll move on to Hong Kong's economy. Uh, Hong Kong's economy, you, uh, you know that the Hong Kong dollar is actually pegged to the U.S. dollar. And whatever the Fed does, we have to follow suit. So when they have record low interest rates, we have record low interest rates, which has, which has absolutely 
in a way, destroyed the real economy in Hong Kong because it's our inflation has gone through the roof. Property prices are insane. Do you think that this the the the, the Hong Kong dollar would be better off depegging or uh, floating its currency or getting rid of it altogether and going with the yuan? I would say they'd be better off going with the yuan. So you have a a, a, a central power of of action. The you know again from my reading about what's now called the umbrella movement, I remember they quoted one woman saying, "The only plate, all the all the restaurants and what was it? All of the um, ah, all of, all of the family restaurants and dress shops or whatever it was, they're gone now. Correct. And all there are are, are drug drug outlets or, or and, uh, and and places to buy gold or something, jewelry, jewelry, and- uh, high end watches, high end clothes, and uh, so called pharmacies. But really, they're just selling everyday needs at inflated prices to the mainland tourists that come here. Yeah, so that's what she said. It's become, mm-hmm. and and it's a multinational takeover. We're coming out with the top trends of 2015 shortly. Mm-hmm. And um, one of them, I'll give you one of them. All it's right. bankism, not capitalism. Stop the baloney about this being capitalism. It, it ain't even close, man. I it's agree. a rigged game by the banks. Save the BS. Anybody that wants to go, you know, teach economics 101, you know, knock yourself out. This is a banking takeover. You said it with the central bank pegging the 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 the, uh, the Chinese the Hong Kong currency to the U.S. dollar. It's one big banking scam. Do you think it was? Oh, oh, here we go. Let's let's really pretend to be stupid. They did away with quantitative easing last Wednesday in the United States. Right. On Friday, they announced. Another round of Abenomics, a money pumping scam that would be equivalent when you compare the GDPs of each country to the United States Fed pumping in three trillion dollars. And most of that money's come here. (laughs) What? Most of that money has actually come here because they're buying real assets with all that printed money. Exactly. And what they're doing, they're keeping the Ponzi scheme going because then you look at their pension fund that has $1.4 trillion, and now they're going to invest 50% of it into the equity markets, both in Japan and globally. Mm. It's a rigged game. It's bankism. And all the banks do is they, they make you they, – what they – the scam is very simple – we used to call them loan sharks when I grew up in the Bronx. <laughs> and here's what they do. Hey, here's some money for you. Don't worry about it. Yeah, low interest rate. You pay me back when you get it. And all it is is they keep loaning you money and you become an indentured servant and you have to work to pay them off. And then they create jobs that pay nothing. That's all this is. It's a banking takeover globally. You say that uh, the that, that we're getting jobs that pay nothing. You're absolutely right. We have a three point three percent unemployment rate. That's pretty much, you know, you could say full employment. But the types of jobs we get are these crappy jobs where all you're doing is really servicing the tourists that are coming through here, and you're not even making you know twelve hundred to fourteen hundred U.S. a month. And with property prices at a decent, I wouldn't even call this decent these days, but about 400 square foot uh, apartment, you're looking at uh, these days uh, 1.5 million U.S. dollars. It's insane. Nobody can reach these property prices anymore uh, who's, who's just working you know, nine to five. So you're correct in your analysis when you say that this is no longer capitalism. We've been harping on this for, for a while. We're not in capitalism. Capitalism is not the problem because we're not in it. You're not in it. Yeah. And so what the socialists are going to do, they're going to blend this as a failure of capitalism. Correct. It's not a fa- failure of capitalism. It's a failure of fascism. It's called a merger of state and corporate powers. Right. And that's what you have. 
The corporate powers are running the governments. And, and there is no government. All they are are a bunch of flunkies for the corporations. There's not a man or woman among them. Look who's running. Look at Cameron, Obama, uh, Hollande. Right. Look around the world. These aren't men. They're boys. And I, they take orders and they follow and do what they're told to do. I, I completely agree with you. We have an example right here. Um, our our former chief secretary, Rafael Hui, who's the number two in Hong Kong, is on trial right now for accepting bribes while he was in office from uh, the billionaire tycoon brothers, the Kwok brothers of Sun Hung Kai Properties, and they're in trial right now. And most of the evidence is damning. The verdict hasn't come out. The prosecution is now go going to closing arguments. But you're correct. They are not... Um, working for the interests, best interests of the people, they're working for the best interests of their corporate masters. Yeah, that's it. And themselves. And themselves. And they're, they're sociopaths and psychopaths. Best and way I, to describe it, them. And, and we just had an election here in the States. Right. Yeah, they, brought, they, they threw out the bums and brought in the scums. <laughs> So nothing's going to change with the Republicans no, taking kidding? over. The, more, the, 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 the inept have just replaced the incompetence. Yeah. I mean, you know, how many much? How much more proof? Do you, what are you bringing in the same group that that caused the other problems? That caused a different round of problems? How could any respectable adult look up to these people? How could anybody with a one ounce of self-respect look up to these people? What do you think, Mr. Salente, is the only way to solve our current predicament where we're living, you know, nine to five, earning, n not just earning enough to get by. And we didn't used to have an economy like this here or even in the U.S. or Canada. We could have our own store. We could have uh, a, a decent, you know, a blue collar job. And and still have enough for a car, a mortgage uh, to pay, and and a house, and all that stuff. Now it's just uh, I can just barely make my rent. I can barely put food on the table, and of course the food we're getting is crappy because we can't afford the good stuff anymore. Um, what is the solution to all this, in your opinion? It begins with the individual, mm -hmm. and to me, people have to regain their courage, dignity self-respect, integrity, and as an Italian, passion, passione, mm -hmm. and, and they don't have it. Um, until that happens, nothing's going to change. And the system that I believe in to work the best, the model exists. It's the Swiss system, direct democracy. Let the people vote. Mm -hmm. And you can, if they could do it in Switzerland, you could do it anywhere. If you could bank online, you could vote online. What's the big deal? And uh, so to us, you, when you want a referendum on the you have a referendum, you put it on the ballot. And the other one is anti-globalization. The people are becoming, have become much, it's, it's not globalization, it's multinationalization. And, and to go back to your, your, your own currency and you have self-sustaining economies as much as you can. I think, though, uh, Hong Kong can't really be a self-sustaining economy because of how it, it, its uniqueness as an entreport, you know, since its inception. Um, but it, it, the the reason I've had you on be, uh, uh, to discuss not just Hong Kong issues but world issues is because when one little thing happens in one country, it affects us here because of our unique status as a free port, as an entreport. For example, when the EU put sanctions on Russia, Russia could no longer get money from London banks as a loan. So what happened was that the Russian banks have come to Hong Kong and getting loans here. So we're very interconnected in this, you know, dot on a map, but I think it's quite significant uh, overall. And um, Well, that's part of your self-sustaining economy. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not, it's not that you're going to manufacture and, and, and grow everything. Mm-hmm. You try to make it as self-sustaining as you can. So that's a unique element within the economy. And, that's what, and so that's the strength. So it, what I'm saying is that for countries that can and use what they have, you mentioned Russia. Right. Russia has all the natural and human resources they need 
to be a self-sustaining economy. Mm-hmm. And, and when you look throughout Europe, so do many of the other countries. And one of the big, one of the big trends we're going to can be coming up with <clears throat> are the breakthroughs in what's called alternative energy. But they're not alternative energies. What's going to happen is that just as we no longer use ice and refrigeration has made ice obsolete, that's like calling uh, uh, the light bulb an alternative energy right? when compared to candles. So you're going to start seeing a point where oil and fossil fuels become, um, become a thing of the past. Mm-hmm. And new energy developments, and we're we're into the 21st century. Right. You're going to see major breakthroughs start happening. So when that happens, con- countries then become even more self-sustaining. I'm a believer in people uh, 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 maintaining their identities. Yeah, every day I meditate, mm-hmm. and at the end of the meditation, I thank the ancestors. Because as I see it, and again, only speaking for myself, Mm -hmm. I see it, I'm just a piece of their DNA. And I'm me because of them. And all the attributes that I've picked up from them and all that I've learned from them. So to me, it's, as I say, my blood is Napolitano, but Mm -hmm. my heart is American. Mm. And I, and I could never be me if I was born in any other country. But I thank the ancestors for what I have, and I do my very best to maintain that, that connection with my ethnicity. So when I'm talking about, multi, about self-sustaining economies, I think the strength of the world is the individuality and personalities of each nation and the people within them, and that's being lost. Our guest has been Gerald Salente, the publisher of The Trends Journal. You can subscribe to The Trends Journal at trendsjournal.com. That's trendsjournal.com. Um, it's, uh, is it uh, um, a quarterly, uh, Mr. Salente? Or? Well, the, the magazine is a quarterly, the, uh-huh. the hard copy, of course, and digital. And then we do a Trends Monthly. Mm-hmm. And we also have Trends in the News. We do the real news each weekday. Uh, every Monday through, through Friday of the real news going on so that you're ahead of the news and on top of the trends. So you, you get a lot with the Trends Journal. And you host those, right? Yes. Yes, okay. So please visit TrendsJournal.com and I, I thank you, Mr. Slanty, for coming on our show. Oh, thank you so much for having me and all the best and, uh, for success and to create a future that's deserving of a high civilization. Thank you so much. Thank you. And welcome back to the final segment of Eye on Hong Kong. We, of course, are going to give our Shame on You award. Right. And uh, I nominate Samsung for this ridiculous privacy policy where they can record your conversation and send it to some third party. I would nominate Samsung too because uh, Hong Kong TV are going to lo- to be launched uh, in, within one or two weeks, and a lot of people using Samsung to watch the uh, new Hong Kong TV channel. Right, because HKTV is not terrestrial. It's actually di- uh, going through the Internet. Mm. And with Samsung TVs, you can just directly connect to the TV and get right. the program instead of getting a separate box. Yep. So it's very dangerous to have this kind of uh, technology. And they're not a, that I'm against technology, but not when it's used against you like that. Mm. So uh, Samsung, congratulations. You have just received the... Shame. Shame on you. Award. And uh, maybe one day recording Korean. Uh, <laughs> so it can be completely understood. And that's the end of our show. Please subscribe to uh, our Facebook page. Uh, I mean, like it. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash I on HK pod. Twitter at I on HK pod. Uh, you can get the rest of the details there. Oh, YouTube forward slash uh, YouTube.com forward slash I on HK. Um, you can get the rest of our contact details there. And, uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed uh, the interview with uh, Gerald Salente. We will try to have more international guests like that in the future, not just local guests. Uh, but, of course, you know, uh, tell us what you think on our Facebook page. You like these kinds of guests? Do you want different kinds of You got any guest suggestions? We are always open to hear your suggestions. And uh, that's the end of our show. Goodbye. Mm, goodbye. <laughs>